Greetings, Glitter Gang, and happy Thursday. Welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. It's 9 o'clock on Thursday, September 15th. This is more of the Christmas in July album. We are going to be chugging right along with this. I have my paper all printed out. We made the uh, inserts. This is a bone. Don't worry about it. Um, we made the inserts for the large pockets. So what we're going to be working on tonight is um, decorating the inserts, decorating the, or, you know, lining the pockets, and then also um, coming up with something for the closures. Okay. So that's kind of the goal. So we're going to get started with this first one here. Hope everyone is doing well. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to Bev, Melanie, Donna, Candy, congrats, you made it to West Virginia, Carol, Joan, Kathleen, Ella, hello everyone and happy Thursday. I almost said happy Monday. That would have been weird. Okay, so here are our three um inserts we have the baby bear insert which is a three and a half by seven inch tag sandwich so um, we're just going to turn these more or less into journaling spots this is the mama bear so the medium sized one it uh, is going to hold four and a quarter inch photos okay gonna look like a little wallet and then the papa bear this one's going to hold uh, photo more photos and then we're going to do something with this don't know yet we'll figure it out so that's the three of them so for starters let's get this matted so when we think about you know what we can do we can do pretty much whatever because this is a pretty neutral page so far so not too bad okay so I printed new paper because we were kind of running low on paper. We're probably going to use these on these on the front because they are a good size for that. So I am going to keep them kind of handy. Oh, that one printed weird. It, got, it um, cut off half the page, which is fine. I can reprint it later. I did it with this one too. Let me just uh, reprint those really quickly. There's always something, always something. <laughs> oh, the printer and I, we had so many fights this afternoon. So many fights. All right, so I'm just gonna um, quickly get these printing. I'm not gonna like stand over there because there's only two of them, but. All right. Oh, well, what can you do? What can you do? So I hope you're doing well. I hope you had wonderful afternoons. Delicious dinners. Okay, so we need to print Mirror Lake again. And... Merry Christmas with the doll lady. All right. Print. All right. So the last time I saw you know who, he was napping. He was like out, out. Very sleepy. Very sleepy. So we may get a little brief bit at the beginning here to get some work done. <laughs> All right. I also printed like 50 photo mats, so um, I've got a stack here of about 25 verticals and about 50 horizontals. I think it's actually 24 and 48 because it's multiples of four. All right. So 
I'm gonna um, flip past the eight and a half by, actually, I'm gonna pull out the, um, these, <laughs> the notebook papers, the journaling type papers. I'm just gonna pull those out. And so now what we're looking for is, we are looking for pattern paper where we've got a good strip that's gonna look good with what's going on over here. So this one could work because of the blue being over here on the side. We could use this blue section and that would look good. Hi. Hi, buddy. Hi. Did you miss your friends already? <laughs> Everyone say, hi, Marcel. Oh, he's not really awake. He's just sweepy. He's so funny because he just plays, he just can't, if there's an opportunity to play, no matter how tired he is, he's going to take it. And this is his playroom as he sees it. So, even though he's really sleepy, <laughs> even though he's really sleepy, he wants to be up here. Okay. All right, so this is one uh, that's a maybe. No. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right. This one's a little too similar, I think. Marcel. Marcel, are we going to have to just become a cat ASMR channel? No, no, quit the crafting and just do cat ASMRs. Can you do cat ASMR, Marcel? Just purr into a tiny microphone. Yeah, he does. He does. He's like, um, oh gosh, he tricked me. He tricked me and bit the microphone. Okay. Okay. Nope. No, no, no. But you love your bone. Nuh-uh, nuh-uh, nuh-uh. Stop chewing on them. They don't like it when you chew on them like that. I don't know what that sounds like to all of you. <laughs> I hope it doesn't sound like really crazy. Okay. Stop eating the microphone, Marcel. You're gonna have to go on the floor if you don't stop eating the microphone. Okay, 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 stop. You gotta go, you gotta go. Okay. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. And then this one, which just has like the peak peeking through, I think that actually is. Let's do this one. Hey. Aw, poor little Marcel. Okay, I'm about to make some paper strips. You're gonna be all good. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut a, um, you know, four inch strip or thereabouts.
Okay, Marcel has a piece of paper now, so he's happy again. Hey, buddy. Now, what we've got to do is Yeah. Okay. Got to do the punch. So I'm going to use the 3 quarter inch tape on the edge that's going to be punched. And then we'll use smaller, less expensive tape on the rest of it. The other thing I'm going to do is, hey, okay, is I am going to use um, some scrap to extend this. so that it can be lined all the way down. I just want to make sure this is the right size. And I'm going to use this. I've made this longer because I want to use this to cover all the a lot of the joints because there's a lot of joints because of the accordion sides on this. So I just want to make sure they're all kind of covered. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, it's three and five eighths for the flaps or not the flaps, the tabs. And three and five eighths looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this little bit here. going to run a line of tape across the seam so there'll be tape part way down and then we'll put tape on the sides. Now we had a terrible storm roll through this afternoon and I have a headache from that. Um, We'll see how I do. You know, I've taken what I can and had some caffeine and drunk a bunch of water. So we'll see how I do. But I think we'll still be able to get a lot done tonight, regardless of my swollen brains. Okay, now what we're going to do is ink the edges and then slide this in. Alrighty. 
So what I'm going to do now is peel the tape and slide this in. Then we can make the flap and start working on the inserts. So I don't put tape all the way at the bottom because it's easier to slide it in if I don't put tape all the way to the bottom. But I do like tape in the middle just to help it lay a little flatter and not buckle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this open nice and wide so I can see to slide this down over all the different edges of paper. And there it is. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so there we go. You can see, if you pull it like this, you can see the white. It's not something I'm worried about because most people won't do that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is Marcel didn't, has gone, so, because he didn't get as much attention as he got this afternoon, so. And other people are around. This afternoon, I was kind of the only one who wasn't busy uh, from his point of view. <laughs> so, oh. Welcome back, sir. Nice to see you. It's been a while since we last saw you, Marcel. It's been a while. I'm going to take these two that are kind of short of where we want them to be and use them with the things from this sheet to decorate the outside of the little baby bear thing. All right, and I'm going to look and pull out the um, pieces I've already cut of the notebook paper. And also these, because there may be a way to use those. And I didn't print those again. All right, so we've got some options. <laughs> He's in the trash already. Okay. <sighs> we should give him a raccoon name because he's always in the trash. All right. So we'll go ahead and use these on the inside. And then on the outside, yeah, we can use these on the outside, so. Hey, buddy. Hey. So we've got this and this, and then these cards I want to use as well. Okay. I'm sorry for hitting you in the face, good sir. Yes, you look how sleepy this kitty is. It's such a sleepy kitty. It's see, he's looking at himself. He actually, he's looking behind the TV to see where he went because he walked off camera. So now he's searching for Marcel, the Marcel that's inside the computer. <laughs> All right. So 
For this, we need a piece, two pieces that are three and a quarter by six and three quarters. All right, so three and one quarter. And then six and three quarters. Uh, there isn't a six and three quarters, so I'm going to have to go over to the big computer. So there's no perfect trimmer. Every trimmer's got some drama. <laughs> All right, so hey, kiddo. Hey, what's up, my little dude? What is up? Oop. Okay, so those are for the inside. Now, for the outside. I'm gonna cut this this little section here. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this will be for the front. And then I'm going to pick three words. Let me get the other set of words as well. Oh, perfect. Winter, snowman. Those two are good. And then um, we'll do mitten. Okay. So now we just need something to go on the back. And we could do more of that paper if we wanted to. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just going to go look through my scraps over here really quickly. I'm sure I have a scrap that'll be fine. I think I might do this. So we'll do three and a quarter by six and three quarters. And then we'll have Oh, you know, I just jumped right into this. I was going to do the closure and I just jumped right into this. How funny. Okay. So here's the back. All right. Now for the front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out and ink them. And then I'm going to glue them on with liquid glue and then I'll stick the whole thing down. So.
And then I'm not going to do a magnet on this little small one because it is little and it's small and it's going to mostly stay shut. At least it seems like it's going to stay shut. Okay. Or should I do a magnet? Ah. Uh, I'll just do a magnet so I don't regret it. <laughs> okay. Now, if you are going to journal in something, you should journal in it before you magnet magnetize it or whatever put the magnets in when possible because otherwise it's not very nice to write over a magnet I mean you can do it it's not impossible but it's just not as it's just not as nice All right, gonna put some 1 8 inch tape on this set. And then get the last one out. Last one. Okay. Perfect. Now, just go ahead and ink these. grab my piece with the snowman all right there we go so go ahead and glue these down Just 
a snowman is snow shaped to resemble a human figure. It's a very succinct definition. Now we're going to go ahead and tape all four of these pieces, chomp the corners, ink, and then this one will be done. And then we'll go back to, we'll just do this at the end. <laughs> we'll just do that at the end. And we'll pretend like the plan was to do it at the end the whole time so that I could see it with the inserts in there. Hi, cute little guy. How are you doing? They said, hi, Marcel. Hi, Marcel. He just hiccuped. You got a hiccup? Oh, he has a hiccup. Aw, that's so cute. I'm sure he doesn't like it, but it's very cute. I know, what a good plan. Everyone believes that that was the plan the whole time. Absolutely. Marcel. No, this one is for you. Take the one. <laughs> there you go. I would never. I would never. Would I lie? No. Of course not. This is a democratic society built on trust, mutual respect. It's definitely not a cult. Not at all. We don't have plans to start a cult. We never say we're going to do one thing and then do another or forget. It's all part of the plan. All part of the plan. All right, what if I put your bone in the pocket? <laughs> Big yawn. Big yawn. Big yawn. He didn't care about the bone at all. <laughs> Not one tiny little bit. I, he played with that bone intensely all evening, but now that he's up here, in the room of uh, endless paper strips. He's like, I don't like bone, what bone? I don't, I, don't, I don't care about bones. What do you think, I'm a dog? I'm a cat, cats don't, cats don't care about bones. That's a dog thing. I'm a paper artiste. That's what I am. A paper artiste.
Okay, now. Peel the tape, stick it down. And then um, as far as I know, they didn't even show up. We were supposed to have our third opinion today, actually. The, the So they have scheduled a third landscaping to come out and give an estimate for replacing all the grass. Um, and they did not come today, as far as I know. Now, they don't technically need to talk to us to give a grass estimate, so it could just be that they, you know, came during my show and no one noticed they were here. Um, but I think it's more likely that they just did not show up. So, um, they're definitely, I think what they're trying to do personally is I think that they don't want to put in an irrigation system and they can't find a company willing to install sod without an irrigation system. And Damien explained it's because, um, reputable companies give sod warranties because sometimes sod does just die, you know? Um, like it was a bad batch of sod or it wasn't sorted properly or it wasn't installed properly, that sort of thing. He's like, but because the owners can kill the grass by not, because you have to water sod like crazy, a lot of them will not install sod without an irrigation system that they can set themselves. You know, because they want to make sure that the sod's going to be watered properly if they're going to have a warranty on it. So that's, I think, what the issue is, is that the company is just trying to find the lease, the home, the, you know, the apartment company is trying to find a sod, someone who will install, install sod, but not install an irrigation system. And so far, both of the people that came out, well, the first guy said, I'm going to include irrigation system in my estimate because there's no way I would install sod and this much sod in a yard this size without irrigation and the second group of people who came they were talking about just the sheer amount of sod like it's they said just to do the verge they said would take six pallets of sod just to do the verge because our yard is we're the corner so it's just this huge arc of grass so, um, they, uh, they, they said, honestly, our boss is probably just going to say no, no, thanks for the opportunity, but no thanks. They're like, he's not going to want to touch this at all. Look how cute this is. Easy, cute. In you go. Okay. So. All right, now let's work on this one. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to make like a template. Oh, um, I finished the book. The book was Stolen Focus by Johan Hari uh, the, that I was talking about last week. I finished the book 
it was good. Um, he's basically trying to, you know, kind of say what are the root causes of the decline in people's ability to focus and what can be done about them. And, you know, of his proposed causes, not all of them are actionable by you as just a person. So, like, um, he talks about lead, for example, um, and how, you know, we did learn, um, you know, that lead and having lead in our gasoline, it's, you know, it's, it's thought to have had been responsible, at least partially, for the 80s, the, all the 70s and 80s crime. You know, when crime went down, it started go, t crime started going way, way down in the 90s. And that does kind of coincide with removing lead from gasoline. And so there, you know, there's a theory that it is known that lead causes aggression. Lead poisoning causes aggression uh, or can cause aggression, an increase in aggression. And so, you know, one school of thought is that lead you know, had something to do with the crime wave. And so there are other chemicals, um, you know, that could be contributing to that from industry, you know. So that's not something you can, like, personally do anything about. I mean, you can contact your congressperson and, you know, become part of a mobilization effort or something of that nature. But, um, you know, you can't stop breathing chemicals in the air, drinking chemicals in the water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Chemicals in the food, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we now have a template, so it'll be easy to mat this. Okay. Um, so there's stuff like that, but then there's also stuff like um, the amount, the type of social media you consume, the amount of social media you consume, that all has an effect. Um, of course, um, you don't, don't have to quit social media, you know, uh, but, you know, he is saying maybe kind of cons like rethink your usage. All right, so what we're going to do with this is I want to put here and here the photo mats I think I'm going to put pattern paper on the front and we're going to put four photo mats on the inside so um, you know he has some proposed solutions of course um, and there are things you yourself can do you know if you find that you use social media too much or more than you want to rather you know there are things that you can do to uh, limit your use and if you find that to be difficult you know there are programs that can help with that like you can tell your phone not to let you be on Facebook for more than however many minutes at a time things like that or a total number of minutes a day so there's that kind of thing but there's also stuff that would require like the tech companies to be different than they are drastically um, because the goal of the tech companies is for you to be on the social media for as long as possible because they can't show you ads if you're not there. So um, there are features that, you know, kind of you would think would make sense for some uh, social media sites that don't exist and they don't exist because they don't want you to leave. So like for example Facebook doesn't have a way for you to see which friends are around you and you can meet up with them if you happen to be in the same part of town or whatever. Like there's not a that order there's not a way for you to like ping out your location and say hey I'm here at this place whatever. Anyway doesn't matter. So the and then um, you don't get a break. So the guy who invented Infinite Scroll is interviewed in the book. And he uh, says he, sh it should, he should never have been invented it. And in fact, it should be outlawed. Um, so he regrets that deeply. <laughs> the guy who, one of the guys who holds the most patents for the iPhone, 
uh, he said he wakes up in the middle of the night s just sweating from a nightmare that he's invented the nuclear bomb. Um, so, like for the human brain, for humanity, like that he thinks that he may have invented something on that level dangerous, which is interesting. Um, infinite scroll is, you used to, when you were scrolling on like Instagram or Facebook or whatever, it could only load so many and then you'd have to press a button to load more. Um, that's just how the technology worked. But now you can keep scrolling and you don't have to press a button to load more. So the guy who invented infinite scroll, which is a technology that allows you to just scroll endlessly on any app or website, the guy who invented that, he's the one who says that he wishes he'd never invented it, it should not be used, and it should be, in fact, outlawed. And he thinks that it should go back to the old way where it should have to, it should ask, prompt you at the bottom of the page, do you want to continue? And you should have to click yes. You know, so there's like, it's really interesting how, you know, and all the tech people send their kids in like in Palo Alto, send their kids to these special tech free Montessori schools and don't let their kids use the tech that they invented. Um, and he was talking about some conference where an ethicist at Google was like talking to a room full of developers and said, I mean, raise your hand if you actually want to live in the world you're creating. And like the room apparently got deadly quiet and really awkward and not a single hand went up. So like, and that was either a Google ethicist or a Facebook ethicist. I mean, basically the companies all know, Facebook's internal studies show that their technology is bad for people. They all know, but they don't care. <laughs> and the reason why is because um, they don't make money by caring. That's the bottom line. So, you know, one of his proposed solutions is these platforms have to be paid for in some way other than advertising. Um, because as long as it's advertising clicks, then they're going to stay as toxic and bad as they are, and they're not going to improve. Um, and he was talking about how, you know, Facebook could make plenty of money if it was even as low as a dollar a month, you know, and then it would have no ads and it would have no incentive to show you a bunch of garbage that will make you mad. It can just show you what your friends and family are up to, which is probably why you join in the first place, whatever, you know. So, you know, that's one of his proposed solutions. Of course, again, how is that going to happen? They're not going to change without in immense pressure. So that's kind of what he's talking about when he says, you know, there's stuff you can do, but the biggest thing you can do if you really care about this issue is you're going to have to organize. Um, so anyway, okay. All right, so we've got the photo mats in. Now, I'm just going to set that there so I remember what I used. Okay, so I'm going to cut this into a square, a four and a quarter inch square with this girl. And then I don't know what I'll use for the other part, but we'll start with her. All right, now I'm going to cut this uh, nutcracker out and put him on the other side of the horse.
I don't think anyone is arguing that social media is always bad, that there's no practical use for it. I think what the people who are concerned about social media are arguing is that it's kind of like a knife or alcohol or something like that. Something where the thing itself is not necessarily automatically bad, but too much of it and for certain people, it's a really huge problem, right? I think that's more in line with what they're all concerned about. So, Um, and, you know, just like alcohol is regulated, there are all kinds of laws around who can have it, how much they can have and do certain activities, you know, that sort of thing. So I think that's kind of what he's saying is, you know, it's like the car. Cars are not bad. In fact, cars are mostly good. You can kill a person with a car. We recognize there's a danger in using a car. There are lots of laws about how you can use your car, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's what they're kind of talking about is it's a new technology. Now we know that there's some danger. We need to adapt is kind of what, again, if it's something you're worried about. Not everyone's worried about it. Some people are like, well, it's up, it's up to you. You know, if it's bad for you, like alcohol, you got to not have it. But it's like, but like alcohol, we recognize not to serve it in schools, right? Right? So we don't put alcohol in, give it to kindergartners because we know that it harms their development. And there is an argument to be made that social media is the same. But there is no, there is nothing preventing that, you know, that kind of usage. There aren't strong guidelines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So... Okay, so now we've got our nutcracker. So he's still here. He got cut off. He was over there. So now he's back. Well, and again, I don't think he's saying that there should be no social media in schools whatsoever. But it does seem to have a negative effect on children and um, or at least a lot of children. So, well, I, I mean, you don't need social media in schools. Let's actually start there. I'm not saying take it out of schools, but the point is in school, that's not um, necessarily the type of internet you have to use. You know, so Social media can be educational. I mean, you can find ed you find educational videos on YouTube or whatever, and those can be shown in a classroom. So in that sense, you'd be using social media in schools, but you don't need Facebook in school. You don't need Twitter in school necessarily. But anyway, um, so uh, there's definitely um, all there's definitely all. Um, and, you know, there's not consent, there's not a lot of consensus scientifically either. So, um, because it's still so new, there just isn't the body of research on this like there is on, like, say, malaria. You know, we're, we're definitely sure malaria is bad. You know, <laughs> that we don't need malaria. If we could eradicate malaria, that would be fine, right? And in fact, I think they, there was an announcement this uh, recently that they have come up with, oh, yeah, oh, so you're talking about the people, yeah, so like the people who work at Google, they send their kids to tech-free schools. Now, there's a couple ways to think about it. One is you could extrapolate from that that they know it's bad for the youths to use <laughs> technology uh, that they're creating. Uh, and that's why they don't want their kids using it. So that's one thing, you know. Uh, that's Another is, it could be they just, a bunch of people out in Palo Alto who really like Montessori schools. I don't know.
All right, so I'm going to take a pencil and go around this. Anyway, it's not, um, you know, the most important thing would be if you're interested at all in this and you want to know what his arguments are to read the book. It's not very long. The book is um, a lot shorter than it looks because a there's a hundred pages of notes. So, um, there's a lot of references that you can dig deeper with if you're so inclined to, to dig deeper. Yeah, so um, the social media platforms, I like um, YouTube, obviously, and I think YouTube genuinely is different from other forms of social media in that it's less immediate. So I, it seems to have the ability to be l uh, less inflammatory and more informational, which is not to say that there isn't insane inflammatory stuff on YouTube, because of course there is. Um, but it just, it's not the same as Twitter. You know, it's not, it's, you, it's hard to go back and forth, back and forth on YouTube other than, um, uh, in the comments section, but you can use YouTube without the comments, you know, so you don't have to engage with the comments on YouTube either. It's a lot easier to use without the comments, um. So, but, you know, people's attention spans are getting shorter, smaller, whatever. Um, they talk about Twitter, just Twitter alone. Um, the last time Twitter was studied, something stayed on the trending page. A topic st stayed on the trending page for an hour of seven, uh, an average of 17 hours. Now it's 11. You know, because there's another thing to be mad about that comes, you know, right on its heels or whatever. And so people just aren't sticking with a topic longer. And they have data on how long people stuck with topics going back as long as they have newspapers to study. So, um, you know, they do know even how comparing older newspapers to newer newspapers, how quickly they change over topics as well. Or the news you know, comparing the new cable news in the 80s to cable news now, how quickly they lose interest in a topic. So they do know that people are kind of moving on from things much more, ra much, much more rapidly. Okay, so now we just need something to go here. And I'm thinking I'll just use this. But, you know, there's also stuff to ask where, and the answer is going to be different for everyone. What does knowing everything now do for me and for the world? So, for example, if I learn that there's a famine in Yemen because of imperialism that Saudi Arabia is doing, and if I read about that every morning and I get mad about that every morning, but that's all 
I do. How did it benefit me? How did it benefit the people of Yemen? You know, so the question is, what good is there in being informed? For me, just intrinsically, is all knowledge worth having? And that is that is is the ultimate question there. And that's a philosophical question that, you know, is still up for debate. And then the other thing is, you know, um, like, well, what are you going to do about it? And it's funny because I remember when, you know, the, the, there was that genocide in the Sudan and the Save Darfur movement, and that could still be going on. I don't know. I've lost track of it. I do know Sudan has since split into two different countries. So, um, but anyway, I remember that I decided when that was happening that every time I read an article about it, I would give $5 to save Darfur so that it didn't feel like I was reading about this horrible thing in vain. And, um, you know, that, in that circumstance, you could say that people me reading about it all the time, people talking about it all the time was actually useful, did actually do something. But, you know, now there's so many things. <laughs> there's so many things. Hey, sweetie. What do you think of my little snowman? Oh, he was old. So I did remember, um, a suggestion that I saw, it's not in the book, but that was like, whenever you see like a headline pop up in front of you that you, you know, think is something interesting, ask yourself, is there something I can do with this information? Like, will there be a benefit to me or society in some way? A, if the answer to that is yes, then to save it into a folder and just look at everything at once, once a day. And in that moment, take whatever action you're going to take. So like, I can give $5 to these homeless kids, whatever. Read the article, go to the website, give the $5 next. You know, not wallowing in it all day long and being upset that the world is so terrible. You know, because that doesn't benefit you and it doesn't benefit the people who have it terrible, you know. So again, that's not in the book. But that's just something, you know, along the same lines I've heard about where in, when it's like, are you missing your peace? You know, do you miss your peace? <laughs> so. Okay, so I'm going to try and find something to go on the outside of the flap. Hey, how are you so cute? Huh? Do you know how you're so cute? <sighs> okay, so I'm going to use this so that it'll have some ornaments on it. Hey. I know everybody else went to bed, huh, Bunny? I'm sorry. I'm sorry no one can play with you right now. And, you know, I have, there are some things I used to follow more closely than I am now. And that it has improved my out, it has improved my piece to kind of follow that rule of, can I do anything about this? You know, <laughs> is this a thing I can change? If so, what can I do? You know, so like I talked about how I emailed my congressman about um, the housing in our area after I saw a thing on 60 Minutes and then he contacted me back and asked me to write an impact statement for the House Ways and Means Committee when they were having hearings about affordable housing. So like that was an example of seeing something, doing something. By the way, it took, it did not it took a while to write that impact statement but it did not take a long time to contact him the first time. All I, I mean, I literally just had to 
email him a link to the 60 minutes segment I saw and write a paragraph about why it mattered to me personally and then ask him to respond, you know, and they did. <laughs> so, you know, you, it did not take very long. It did not take very long. So you can, um, you know, there's stuff you can do easily, easily. So um, I think that's the, the point is, you know, you weren't, you know, really asking yourself, what is this doing for me? And it's not to say that the, it only has to be doing stuff for you because you can also ask yourself, what's this doing for the world? But if the answer to both those questions is nothing or it's negative, then, you know, maybe it's time to adjust. And so I've really cut back. I, I use, what do I, I use YouTube the most. YouTube has always been my favorite social media. I was an early adopter of YouTube. I'm on, I've been on YouTube such a long time. Um, and it is the social media that I think is the best. With the possible exception of Wikipedia, I mean, and also interestingly enough about Wikipedia is they talked about how the length of time that people spend on every social media site has steadily increased since each of those social media sites was invented, except for Wikipedia. And that's because Wikipedia doesn't do anything to try and keep you there. You know, there's no infinite scroll. When you finish an article, it doesn't pop up a suggestion for a different article for you to read. It's not trying to keep you there. And why not? Because there's no ads. There's no ads. So, you know, <laughs> that's, you know, that's a kind of an example of how you go to Wikipedia, you do what you need to do, and you get out. Um, because no one's trying to brainwash you. <laughs> so. Now, I can spend a long time on Wikipedia because I am one of those people that is like, okay, let me just look up this thing. Okay, well, then let me look up this other thing that this thing reminded me, made me think of. And then, like, that's how you, I end up with, what are, uh, I mean, I've read some weird stuff on Wikipedia, that's for sure. <laughs> so, but yeah, YouTube, and I think YouTube, there's a lot of creativity on YouTube. I think it's one of the most creative platforms. Which is not to say that people aren't being creative and artistic on other platforms, but I just think there's something about YouTube that makes it easier. Um, especially for teaching, I find YouTube great. So um, anyway, all right, so we've got this, 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 this. So now we just need to put something on the back to, you know, help it slide in and out and we'll be good to go. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use this because it coordinates with this on the front. So I need a piece that's four and a quarter by eight and three quarters. And then the other social media that I really enjoy is Reddit. Now with Reddit is, Reddit is going to be a different experience for everyone because you are going to join whichever smaller subreddits you're interested in. And whatever you're interested in, there's at least one for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's definitely where, you know, if you find that a certain thing, if you don't like the culture of a certain subreddit and they all have different cultures, they all have different rules, some of them are more heavily moderated than others. Um, for example, r slash history is one of the most heavily moderated uh, subreddits, but they also have some of the best content on all of Reddit. Um, Ask Reddit is hit or miss, but sometimes it can be amazing. <laughs> so, you know, there's all, it, there's, it, Reddit is kind of just what you want. You will, you can find it. Um, 
and often if there's like a thing that a bunch of people are interested in but sometimes they'll split into different kind of groups where people ha who lean more towards this way in the hobby or more towards that way in the hobby so it can be even more specialized so in that sense it's good the only time reddit can be bad is if you're if your subgroup your subreddit they're called um trends for some reason and then a bunch of people not from the group come to see what is all what's why you're trending and then that can kind of be disruptive you know but they have all kinds of ones for reading they have one for people doing the 52 book project, which is reading a book a week. Um, you know, if you like sci-fi books, if you like fantasy books, if you like whatever, whatever you like, you know, you can find it there. Okay. All right, so far so cute. Okay, so we've got these two. Now, I'm gonna do a recording break. We'll do the third one and then the flap in the next video. So if you're watching live with me now, just hang tight, nothing's gonna change for you. If you're watching in the recordings on YouTube or in the archives, if you're in the archives, just click to the next video. And if you're on YouTube, next video is either out in the playlist for this project or will be posted soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.